Ducks going to pick it up, and here we go. Chuck oh, how about that? That's going to score. How about that? And Oregon repeats as the Pac-12 champion. Champion. Over Rui, 4-3. Yes! Oh, and a steal and slam for Williams. Duarte to the basket. The slam. For the third time in the last five years, the Ducks are Pac-12 champions. season champions and now Pac-12 tournament champions. Welcome to Duck Insider. We're just getting started. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Better banking, local solutions. Live from the Country Financial Studio, here's Joey Mack. We go on the air with some very, very exciting news today. Uh, first, tomorrow is National Signing Day. Always a great day to celebrate a lot of optimism around any football program, but particularly when you're signing the best recruiting class in program history, there's a lot of good things to talk about. Also, as we go on the air today, I am happy to report that Oregon men's basketball is gearing up for Washington State on Thursday. Now, look, we all know that a lot of things can change between, as I say this, at 1 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon and 8 o'clock when the ball gets tipped off on Thursday. But right now, Oregon is continuing on practice and on track for that matchup on Thursday. We'll tell you more about it on Tip-Off Tuesday coming up this afternoon, presented by our friends at Carl's Jr. And, of course, I talk about Carl's Jr. on a Tuesday because Athletic Director Tuesday is with H.J. Cohn. We just had to make that selection on a Tuesday where he's, I'm sure, and I already know this, I'm burying his lead and I'm not going to let him pull the surprise today. He already has something from Carl's Jr. with him today, and I'm shocked that you haven't eaten it yet, H. I do. It's uh, waiting patiently, and uh, the sooner we can get through this, the sooner I get to dominate that thing. Did you hear that? That was such a real subtle way of being like, Joey, Get, on, your, Joey. get your butt in gear. Let's let's on, get baby. to it. Hey, signing day is always a lot of fun. H.J. H. Cohn, a Senior Associate Athletic Director with Duck Athletic Fund with us. Uh, Going to go through all of the latest and greatest on signing day because there's a lot of events and certainly a lot of things are different. Uh, we all know that. We're going to talk about all of that. And I should also mention head coach Melissa Lombardi, Oregon Softball. Their schedule is being released by the Pac-12 this afternoon. So we went a little in-depth on that and talked about the non-conference slate for Oregon Softball as well. She and I sat down this morning. We've got that for you. In addition to a long look into Oregon Football Signing Day with, of course, H.J. Cohn. So. Did you know, H.J., that 10 years ago today, DeAnthony Thomas picked Oregon? I, I did see that on social media today. That was pretty cool and um, all for the right reasons. And obviously the rest was history created um, by him and, and onto his not only professional career playing days, but uh, graduating, getting his degree and just uh, falling in love with the place, Eugene. It was, it was pretty cool to rewatch that. Hey, in all seriousness, do you – remember what was going through your mind 10 years ago when DeAnthony made that selection? Uh, in all seriousness, no, but I can imagine where I was most likely and who I was with and um, probably getting pretty excited. So uh, <laughs> de definitely, a, you know, you look back and it, it's funny. I saw Mosley put out a tweet of, you know, some youngsters in the department. When I say Josh Frankel, what do you guys think of? And, and obviously all the responses are triple overtime kick against USC and a monumental game as we all know and so you look back at the impact that a lot of these student athletes have and in particular in this case talking football and signing day um, and gosh it's been a heck of a ride and um, that segueing into where we are now the future obviously looks pretty bright and it, it's it's funny to me you know and I'm obviously in the business of how much excitement that recruiting draws now and but when you do look at the data and analytics the the star correlation typically does add up and is showing, showing what uh, the teams will look like on the playing field in the future. So definitely the right reasons to be excited uh, for us, especially in, and not only basketball, but gosh, how many sports across the board can our fan base uh, showcase in the sense of the success on the recruiting trail. And, and I think a lot of that is a kudos to the fans, um, our atmospheres we create in our venues, but also the brand, in the O. And um, I'm, I want to say Joey Harrington was recently on the podcast and kind of mm -hmm. talked about that and what that O means to a duck and how it changed the landscape of our university. 
H. J. Cohen, our guest, uh, talking about signing day. I think it's cool to to take that look back. H. I mean, you and I both went to Oregon, and you know, I I, I think. I, I got to say this because you and I were both just talking with Peter Jacobson the, the, this morning, and it was like, you know, what, you didn't get the 10th best kid in Oregon when Peter was around. And now, I mean, look at it. I mean, you think about the history, H, and, and I think you can speak to this better than most can. It really is unprecedented, the rise, and then the way that Oregon's been able to maintain the level of success after the meteoric rise. Recruiting's a big part of that, kind of as you touched on. Yeah, you, you, it's crazy. You focus so much on winning games on the court, on the playing field, in, in addition to obviously the academic success you you want to have in, in our main mission here. But when you look at how that success translates, it, it really starts on the recruiting front. And um, it is, you know, it, it's no secret, right? There's some highly compensated people in this business around the country. Um, but when you get into it and look at the day-to-day lifestyle of what that rigorous schedule looks like when you're not even in season and you're re- recruiting, <clears throat> for us, there's a benefit of that when you pick up the phone and call someone and you say I'm at Oregon, they pick up. Mm-hmm. And that's not always the case at a lot of schools. That's a, that's the benefit because you can go after the, the best of the best, the elite. The con is they might be all over the place. They might be in Georgia, New York, uh, Canada. You know, we're an international recruiting school now in, in some sports. So um, we're very fortunate, again, to have that brand that has been built up over the last 20 plus years. I know we celebrated a little bit last year, two years ago, excuse me, uh, two seasons ago, technically of the O and uh, how that came to fruition. And and again, we're still embracing that culture and and that brand. Signing day tomorrow. uh, Of course, we've been talking about uh, our show in the morning. I guess we can call it the National Signing Day Morning Show Special. I got to start calling it the morning show because that's what it is. 8.30 in the morning, uh, we'll start. Mm -hmm. And every single assistant coach uh, will join us, uh, talk about the recruits, and we'll watch highlights together. So fans, you can join us on the Oregon Football Facebook page, Oregon Football Twitter, GoDucks YouTube. We've got a full show for you coming. Uh, The coaches will be joining us on the University of Oregon Alumni Association guest line, just like HJ is because this is the world that we're living in right now. Uh, things look a little bit different. Uh, and and on that front, H.J., I mean, we're, we've done this show in the past kind of for, for the fans who haven't been able to attend these big events where the coaches go and, and talk. And that was always kind of our point with doing the show to, to celebrate the class and have the coaches come on, watch highlights, talk about them. But now this year, everybody is kind of going through that. Uh, tell fans a little bit about what's going on with the virtual event tomorrow and how fans can still get involved in the process. Yeah, so we are excited. You know, you you take on um, this year, this last year, we'll call it, and you look for opportunities to to grow and, and pivot almost, right? And that pivot, could be personally, pivot. <laughs> that could be personally, that could be professionally. Um, and in our world, you know, and all businesses, right? They're looking to continue to see how do we make a change and, and adapt, if you will. And, and you really have to be. And, and a lot of that stems, in our case, to culture. Um, to me, it's no surprise to see the success of our recruiting class, not only with football, but again, across the board, you look at men's basketball, women's basketball, softball, track and field, you name it, I could keep going. Um, but you look at the opportunities and the opportunity for us at first was, you know, very rare did anyone feel one comfortable getting onto um, online platforms such as Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Um, but two, if they did, it was just kind of awkward, right? Because we weren't living in that world. Well, now... You can really, your reach in this case can be going a lot further. And so we had a golf tournament, uh, our annual, the NAS fundraiser in October this year, where, you know, you can pull off with health and safety protocol being first, you can pull off the actual golf portion, but you can't really do that social gathering, that camaraderie before or after. Um, And with that was an auction. So we actually were able to adapt and went to an online platform. And, uh, you know, it's funny, the two, I remember two of the winners from the golf bags were two from the East coast. And and one of them reached out and said, I would have never had a chance to win this. And I've been wanting a working golf bag for so long. So we are really excited about that. Um, Tomorrow night at 6 PM, uh, you can find it on our website, our national signing day website, which is available at go ducks um, is an opportunity for an hour long show. And uh, a lot of faces that people will recognize, we have been able to basically transition our live events to this platform and really let people chime in um, not only to see what's been going on with recruiting but we have a couple you know some new faces and and coach DeRuiter on the defensive side I think he had his press conference yesterday Mm -hmm. and and a lot of excitement probably a lot of questions out there on that and what he's his plans are with the defense so a lot to come I would highly encourage people to tune in like I said go to goducks.com and track down our national signing day page and um, 
will also allow you to check out the auction as well, which is going all week. Godux.com slash signing day for that event. You can RSVP. It's going to feel like a, a pretty private event, uh, to be honest. You're going to have a lot of fun for those of you who are able to tune in. So a full day slated. Uh, we got coaches on talking with, with, with me tomorrow, going through highlights, and then everybody else gets a chance to, to tune in in the evening, which is going to be great. H.J. Cohn, our guest, a Senior Associate Athletic Director. You talked about the auction, H. Uh, I, I actually think this is one of the, the coolest pieces, and I – this is kind of a two-part question, so I'll break it up. Let's start first with H. I mean, th this show, there's no secret that we have a lot of fun conversations with people in the athletic department that, that aren't coaches, that, that aren't the people that get out there in front of the camera all the time. I just want to say, first and foremost, that to you and your staff for pulling off what, what I think is going to be a, an excellent day tomorrow, just kudos. And, and I know you as, as a leader yourself, it's got to feel pretty good to have a staff that's pulled off something like this that's on the horizon tomorrow. Well, it's pretty easy to stay out of the way and let them go to town <laughs> because I hear that's that. really what, what um, I've done. I mean, honestly, a, a ton of kudos. Thank you for saying that, Joey. But a ton of kudos really goes to a number of departments and, and staff members who, who believe in our mission and, and what we're doing. And, you know, we are really proud to see the momentum rise and continue to rise when it comes to recruiting events, specifically National Signing Day for football. And so for us, it was a no brainer of how do we continue to keep this train rolling forward? And um, again, a lot of kudos to, to the, a lot of different staff members. And I know on our end, there's been a lot of leadership, but Lexi Cross, I think was on here the other day and she's done just a fantastic job. Um, something that you can tell she's passionate about and you can see how good she is at it leading. So I've honestly stayed out of the way. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have a lot of alumni that are excited to engage and have been excited to engage. Um, you know, the likes of, well, I don't want to give anything away, but hopefully you'll see some tomorrow <laughs> night. And there's been, there's been a lot of excitement brewing around it. We're, we're fortunate enough to have a fan base that is eager to participate as well. Yeah. I'll just say fans tomorrow, you're going to see some, some former ducks. You're going to see some current ducks and it's all going to be nicely packaged for you into a good duck sized <laughs> ton of fun. Um, and actually you talked about the auction, which you can find via goducks.com slash signing day. Had you guys ever done an auction like this before? I mean, I, I saw on social media when, when, when everything opened up yesterday, we've been talking about it kind of teasing it the last few days, H that, I mean, there's some stuff on, on the auction that, that I don't think has ever been available to a lot of people before. I mean, that's gotta be kind of cool for fans. Yeah. You know, there's some, there's some stuff that we've historically done, but there's also some stuff um, that we're able to kind of work in this year, just due to the pandemic. And, and it's been really cool to see people um, want to give back. And so there's some local businesses that are involved this year. I'm going to say for the first time, um, obviously we have a, a great partnership with, you know, a lot of our big time sponsors, the likes of Toyota Regents and so forth. And so we're really fortunate to see some other businesses come on board and say, Hey, we, we are willing and able to help right now. Um, while many's, many obviously aren't. And so the ones that are, we're just extremely grateful for their support and believing in us. And um, I think what they're going to take away from this is that tomorrow is going to be really fun and engaging uh, with an opportunity. Again, I, I keep using that word opportunity is uh, we're going to get out of this thing. We're going to get out of this pandemic and, and get back to what will be the new normalcy and how that will be defined is up in the air, but some sort of sense of normalcy. That doesn't necessarily mean that what we're doing now, such as an online auction, or Zoom calls go away either. And so again, I, I'm eager to see how the our work in our specific industry, it's changing. Um, sure, we're gonna adopt some things back, but also a chance to look at ourselves and say, how do we continue to get better with what we just learned? So very excited for tomorrow night. And um, I, I know our coaches are too. So I, I see, I, I'm looking here on on the Jordan 6s that, that are closing in on, on a $4,000 bid. Did I see H.J. Cohn at, yeah. just put in you for the new Red. top You bid? must have, I, I'm, this is in the nicest of ways, you must have COVID hitting you or something crazy because <laughs> you're not reading that. Or you got the vaccine and, and you got some side effects. I guess so. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I could have sworn. I mean, I'm looking here, right? you know, white hot no. duck Jordan 6s, H.J. Cohn. Yeah, well. This interview is over. No, <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's actually kind of fun. It's, it's a little addicting when you go on there and you see people bidding. And um, obviously it's no secret what we're raising money for is to support student athlete experience and our mission of, um, you know, really trying to help young men and women, you know, directly influence and impact their lives and, and multiple generations in some sense. And so for their, for us to raise money to go directly to support student athlete scholarships, um, and then in turn, obviously, we all, I think, believe and know what the impact of University of Oregon on our communities and state 
uh, has. So we're it, it's really a win-win that we're excited about. Women's Final Four chair uh, signed by Kelly Graves, a apple green jersey signed uh, already. Uh, you got golf at uh, the <laughs> – I love this. You can golf with Derek Radley and Monica Vaughn. You can get your butt kicked by both of them. Yeah, seriously. You know, Robert Johnson, you can golf with him. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of different stuff available on the auction, so I encourage people to check it out. Okay, we got to get a quick timeout. When we come back, we're going back in time because I always do with H.J. Cohn, and we're going to ask him about the last time he played a college football video game. That's coming up. He's smiling in the camera right now. Not going to be a great answer, but I got it. Athletic Director Tuesday with H.J. Cohn is brought to you by Pepsi, and we're back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Hi, welcome to the Spicy Drive-In. May I take your order? Can I get the spicy chicken sandwich, please? The spicy chicken is an excellent choice, sir, and a drink. Uh, whatever's fine. Oh, may I make a beverage pairing recommendation this evening? Sure. If we are feeling especially bold tonight, sir, I would recommend the Mountain Dew with that. It's bravely unrestrained with a very alive aroma that pairs wonderfully with your spicy chicken. It's followed by a hint of zesty citrus flavor. Uh, yeah, that sounds amazing. I'm sure you already know this, sir, but remember to appreciate the nose first by giving the Mountain Dew a little swirl to relieve really volatize it. Uh, 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 vola what? To change the flavor compounds and activate your taste buds to get them fully primed for that chicken sandwich. Ah, it's delicious. <laughs> now you're getting the hang of it. The muscular flavor charge characteristics of Mountain Dew make for an absolutely epic mouthfeel when paired with spicy cuisine. It is quite on point, sir. So. Dude, it's a perfect match. Like they were made for each other. So true, so true. When you want to make good food bolder and bold food better, do the do. Your daily dose of Oregon athletics. This is Duck Insider from Learfield IMG College. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting, a Teenager, Learning the Lingo. Jelly, jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org, brought to you by the US Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spell. No, Dad, like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pull me out. <laughs> this is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. We're back on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. I'm Joey Mack inside the Country Financial Studio. H.J. Cohn is joining us on the University of Oregon Alumni Association guest line. There's some synergy there. H.J. is probably a member of the UAA and has been since he got his free shirt his freshman year, just like me. Right, H.? <laughs> UAA is awesome. They do a great job, and they're uh, really good partners with the university and, and not only the university as a whole, but athletics as, as well. So we're, we're big fans of UAA. H uh, is here, thanks to our good friends also at Pepsi. So we've already hit on a lot of these. I mean, you've got your Carl's Jr. burger. You probably have your, your Pepsi when, you, when, when you're, when you you know, unhealthy, which never happens. you got to like represent me. my boys Bigfoot, so absolutely. That's right. Athletic Director Tuesday brought to you by Pepsi, locally owned Bigfoot Beverages. H.J. Cohn, uh, all right, so the big news today, many of you, uh, like me, were probably excited about this, that – EA, who has long made the Madden franchise, they used to make the NCAA football franchise. Last one was in 2014, not that I'm an expert on the subject or anything. But they announced today that college football video games are coming back on the horizon. This is obviously a large conversation. We all know that. But right now, can we all just uh, be excited that that could potentially be a thing again? Because everybody used to love playing those games. H, there's a lot to unpack there. I won't ask you to, to talk about all of it because I think it's a very large conversation that we probably could fill an entire hour with. So I'll just ask this. When was the last time you played a college football video game? You know, you're, it's going to be a boring answer. I, I really am not and never have been a video game guy. Um, Boo! <laughs> and that's not to brag like I was outside being the real athlete or anything because I, I could barely do that too. Played a little basketball and baseball. But um, no, I think this is a topic that's a long time coming, right? It's, it's similar lines with name, image, and likeness. We call it NIL. And it, it's going to play itself out. And we're, again, our core mission 
at the department is to create an exceptional student athlete experience and, and support scholarships. And so um, if that finds, it, it's gotta you know, work together to continue to support our mission and I'm sure it will in the long run. So sometimes these things, as we all know, take time to play out. I'm not suggesting that it should or shouldn't. I'm just being realistic of how long it does take to play out, but there's always topics. And, and this kind of goes back to what I alluded to earlier. There's constantly things changing. You got to adapt and, and do the right thing. And that's what I know with, uh, you know, our leader, Rob Mullins, that we're going to do. Well, I, I mean, he may not have been a video game guy, but <laughs> but I was. I Yeah, I just wasn't. I don't know why. I, I, I'll i tell you the last video games I probably played was on uh, the console N64. Yeah, that's fine. And, and it was probably GoldenEye. Yeah, that's also I – still, I still play that. That's That's also fine. But, yeah, we have – I still have a sealed copy of NCAA football 2003 with Joey on the cover. There you um, go. Which is one of the, I mean, now here's, here's the, a bigger question for you, H. I mean, everybody always loved playing as Oregon in, in the game, right? Like that was a big reason why everything was, was talked about. I think for, for duck fans, because you know, Oregon was pretty darn cool. It is just another way of showing off how awesome Oregon is in some capacity. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, part of this is going <laughs> to, how are departments and universities even as a whole going to flip this into a recruiting uh, strategy, Mm -hmm. you know, in some, at some level. And so what that looks like, and I know a lot of our student athletes enjoy playing it and they're previously playing it and enjoy video games as a whole. So how will it fit in is again, I don't know that answer, but I'm sure it will. And um, probably makes sense that we're on here talking about recruiting. It'll somehow tie to recruiting as well. Hey, it's it's almost like I meant to bring it up to tie to. Well done, H. This is good. This is good co-hosting right here. Well done, H. J. Cohn with us, Athletic Director Tuesday, brought to you by Pepsi. Uh, we haven't yet talked about uh, any basketball. We'll do that in a moment, H. But uh, select a seat info coming up for some season ticket holders. Uh, you and I talked before the show. I wanted to make sure we hit on that for folks. Yeah, February fourth. It's a busy week for us. So um, obviously, this is all. Um, you know, subject to the local and health, health, local and state health authority and guidelines. But we are in the process of this week on Thursday, February 4th, starting the select a seat process. And basically what that is for the simplest of terms is you, you're able to log in and uh, look at a map of Autzen in this case and say my current two seats are here highlighted in red and everything in green is available and um, so forth. So you can move around, you can add seats and um, it's a chance for fans to go in and just say, Hey, here's, I want to, I want to sit here. There's a great software that runs it. Um, you'll be able to see where the new scoreboard is up there. Um, so again, an opportunity starts February 4th. I think it's going to go for about a week and a half and it's all time slotted. So if you are doing that, I'd recommend getting in and logging on, at least checking it out because there's a, some good opportunities to, to relocate if that's what your desire is. And in all seriousness, uh, the, the, the new scoreboard will change the calculus for many of you. I'm, I'm just telling you, we can't wait to have you all back in there and, and see what it's all about. And I can't wait to be back in a time where I'm not walking around in the stands while I'm on the quote sidelines for Jerry and Jorgie. And I'm, I'm actually standing in seats that I wish people were occupying. So everybody wear those masks that do the best you can. And hopefully we'll all be back as soon as possible. Speaking of that, uh, college basketball age, I mean, you and I haven't talked about hoops in a little while now. Uh, men's basketball, as as I mentioned at the start of the show, everything goes according to plan. Ducks are scheduled to play on Thursday at 8 o'clock. Now, we all know that a lot of things can change. It's been a fast-moving news cycle, but that's what the Ducks are preparing for. They are practicing now and getting ready for Washington State. And I saw Devin ask, oh, the word on Richardson, Duarte, Figueroa. If I had an update on those, I would tell you, because I have the exact same question as I get ready for Oregon and Washington State coming up on Thursday. With all that in mind, H, I mean, I, I'm just curious, your conversations with, with fans and with coaches and, and just everything about uh, going through the pauses, at some point I think it kind of is what it is, and I'm just excited to be able to get back to basketball, and I think everybody has the light at the end of the tunnel. It's March Madness, right? We're still gearing up towards that. Yeah, I mean, of course, March Madness is, is one of the most um, iconic times of the year for sports fans as a whole, whether you're um, really into basketball or not. It's, it's kind of like, you know, um, car racing, right? You, the Daytona 500 is a, a track that sticks out to the average fan. Uh, and so it, it's attractive in, in a lot of senses. And so um, obviously, if you're a student athlete here at Oregon, we uh, our goal is to play in March Madness and go deep in it every year on the men's and women's side, as we have obviously seen. And so for us, we, we really just want to try and continue to do the best we can to practice uh, safety protocols to allow us to, to have that opportunity. Um, s- certainly, 
some great teams on both sides and, and surely excited for Coach Altman and the guys to be able to get back this week. Um, the good news that we have going for us is we have two unbelievable coaches. So I know both programs have been on a pause a little bit and men coming back. And uh, the benefit that we have is great leaders that can really get us going back again quickly because at this point, you know, you're early February, which is kind of crazy to think, but time is against you in some sense of just trying to get games in. And not only Oregon, but but a lot of teams across the league. So, uh, and, and country for that matter. So we'll see how things play out. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where our team kind of takes it this weekend, obviously being off for just 10 days or so, you know, that you, you kind of think what could happen in that 10 days. Are they going to be um, struggling just because they, they haven't been able to work out a ton? Are they going to be rested? And so they do have some energy. Again, we're lucky to have Coach Altman in that case to, to be able to lead us. And I'm, I'm fairly positive that we got a, a good one going into this weekend. So More basketball today on Tip Off Tuesday. You can watch the show live at 2.30, the latest on Oregon men's basketball and women's basketball. Kelly Graves is going to join the show. He talked to Terry Johns this morning with some updates on the women's program as well. Tip Off Tuesday coming up this afternoon, 2.30, if you want to watch the show live on the Oregon basketball social media channels. And then we've also got the radio portion coming up this evening at 7 o'clock. Before I let you go, H.J., I just got to chime in because this is always a huge, huge week for Oregon, every school with signing day around the country. Uh, but we're also closing in on one of the top three most unproductive work days in America on Monday. Did you know that? On Monday? Yeah, on Monday. What's, um, I, I'm drawing a blank, what's Monday? There's the day after a very large NFL game. Oh, Super Bowl. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <Again. laughs> yeah. Sunday, you know, Sunday, man, you're going to recover. You don't want to mess around with Sunday. You're going to be... <laughs> Ah, yeah, you know, it, especially as you get older, you can't you can't bounce back that quickly. So, uh, I listen. I've already I'm already on the on my way to putting on the COVID nineteen in, in my belly. So no, I got to behave on Sunday. Fair enough. Well, I, I also saw I happened to see on the uh, Heritage Distilling Company gift card. It's up to 160. Oh, 165 dollars now. It's Shea Cone. I see it on the on the godex.com slash signing day auction. Godux.com slash signing day. Uh, One of many things you can bid on. Yeah, uh, one of the uh, top three most unproductive work days in in America on an annual basis is the day after the the big game, if you will. Do you have the other two? Uh, It's the Thursday of the NCAA tournament is in the top three. So two of them are sports related. The other is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Well, we'll make a pact to work work hard on those days this year. All right, Joey? (laughs) Hey, in all seriousness, I hope that we're working really hard on the Thursday of the NCAA tournament because that means we've got the Ducks in action. Same thing on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving because if I recall, we're slated to play in the Maui Invitational, our men's basketball program, and hopefully football and women's basketball are cranking at that time too, so even more so then. I hope I'm in Hawaii. That's what I heard from that. I hope I'm in Maui. Thank you, H.J. This has been great. It is Athletic Director Tuesday, always brought to you by Pepsi, locally owned Bigfoot Beverages, Go Ducks, Drink Pepsi. H, I can't thank you for taking the time enough, and uh, I'm really sorry that you're not going to be getting in on the fun with me over the course of uh, the next few hours as I celebrate uh, this evening the, the momentous news of college football maybe returning to uh to video game land all right h always a pleasure and uh good luck with signing day tomorrow uh godux.com slash signing day uh h.j Cohn, thank you for the time sir do we miss anything no thanks so much for having me always a pleasure and fun to get on here and let's get back at it with a big week for signing day select to see basketball we're right back in the thick of it so looking forward to it enjoy that carl's jr without me Thanks, Age. See you, buddy. All right, we're going to get a quick timeout. When we come back, head coach Oregon softball, Melissa Lombardi, will join us and an inside look at the Hatfield Dowland Complex and what it's meant to recruiting. We'll examine that next on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. As my family continued to grow, I realized I'd have to replace my beloved Jeep with something that has, well, more seats. 
I'm Jason Hines, country financial rep and father of seven. Whether you're upgrading from your sporty ride with no room for a car seat or finally replacing your well-loved beater that still has a cassette player, you'll want the right protection for your new car. Work with a country financial rep like me and get the protection you need at a price you can afford. Learn more at takesimplesteps.com or contact a local country representative. You're listening to Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom, come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. It's important to buckle up your kids. I know. Sometimes car seats can be complicated. (laughs) I know. And if your child's in the wrong seat and you get into a crash. I know. It could lead to a serious injury. I know. So you're 100% sure you have the right car seat for your child's age and size? I don't know. Don't think you know. Know you know. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Make sure you have the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Duck Insider, presented on Point Community Credit Union. Joy Mack here with you inside the Country Financial Studio. And joining us via the beauty of modern technology, Oregon softball head coach Melissa Lombardi, kind enough to join us. Coach, are you over at the Jane getting ready for practice? Yes, actually I am. I love it. I absolutely love it. Because, uh, Coach, I, I, I got to get into this a little bit with you with uh, the schedule. I know a lot of fans are still wondering. We can tell you that the schedule will be coming your way soon. We won't get into the details too much with the conference schedule, but, Coach, I can get into the non-conference schedule with you a little bit, right, coming up here in a couple weekends? Yes. I can tell you Pac-12 is supposed to post our our schedule pretty quick, which will allow us to post. So Woo! I'm we're there. We're there. Woo! Everybody rejoice. Uh, we've got a softball <laughs> schedule coming to GoDucks.com soon. Uh, I know, though, with the non-conference schedule, Coach, just – Take us back a little bit and, and talk to us about how you were able to put this non-conference schedule together. I mean, I know there had to just be a lot of moving parts for you and your staff and every staff around the country. Sure, there, there's been a lot of moving parts trying to figure out where we can go play, um, if we could play close to home in our region. Um, can we play at schools that have the same testing protocols that we have? You know, what is their school when we're, I mean, the month of February, we have to travel. The majority of schools, I think, in the country are traveling in February. So from there, finding schools that have the same type of testing, uh, their counties, they're, you know, are allowing them to put on tournaments in their areas. So there was just a lot of things like that. Overall, I felt like it went pretty smooth. And I think the coaches that we've been working with have been great. You know, we're all trying to accomplish the same thing. And basically, that is to play. So it wasn't too bad. It's just waiting for you know, the pack to um, release our schedule so we can release it, you know, just little things like that. What's a successful non-conference season this year? I mean, I know that's kind of a big open-ended <laughs> question, but what, what, what are you going to look back on when you start playing Pac-12 games and be like, all right, we did, we did well in the non-conference slate? Well, I think most, first and foremost, is just that we have a healthy team. That's the number one concern. And um, with that, getting an opportunity to play. I just think of our non-conference and how that prepares us for conference. So to get those games in prior to opening up our conference season really allows us to see where we are as a team. Uh, you know, what do we look like? Are we ready to start conference? I, I just think it, you know, just the preparation that it, it provides us. Diving into your team a little bit as we continue with Oregon softball head coach Melissa Lombardi. We, we've hit on some of the, the names that, that fans are familiar with, some of your veterans, that pitching staff. Are you getting closer to a starting lineup with some of your position players at this point in practice? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think there's, you know, obviously these guys are always competing for spots at practice, and I really love how they've gone about it. Um, but, you know, the one thing that's nice is I think from my first year, I've, I've got a group of athletes, you know, that are going into their third year that are returning. And, you know, they started out as freshmen 
and kind of got thrown into the fire that first year and they're veterans, you know, they're, they're in their third year and I'm calling them veterans. So it's, it's pretty cool. Talking about some of your individuals, uh, I, I've always been impressed with the way that Rachel Sid goes about mm-hmm. her business. Uh, where is she at heading into this season? Rachel's in a really good place. Um, talk about she's very businesslike. Every day she shows up to practice ready to go. I think in lineup wise, um, you'll see her at third. I love how quick she is. Um, I always think of third basemen's having low center of gravity and being able to handle quick shots that come at them. Um, being on the corner, but then also understanding that they've got to be able to be in position to charge for bunts and short games. So I think she does both very, very well. Um, I think you'll see her probably like in the three or four spot um, in our batting lineup. She provides a ton of power. I think she's worked hard to, um, you know, obviously has power to the left side, but she's worked hard to be able to take that power to right center as well. I think of Rachel and I just think she's a really smart hitter at the plate. She comes to the plate. uh, She doesn't give the pitcher much to go off. She's just pretty calm. She really understands the plan that she wants at the plate and does a good job of attacking. So I've been pleased watching her all fall and through the month of January. I'm curious, too. You and I were talking after we we, we recorded last week about Allie Bunker and just the step that Mm -hmm. she's taken. Uh, Tell fans a little bit about the sophomore this year. Definitely. Allie Bunker, another freshman, you know, my first year here, uh, I just, the growth that she has had on and off the field, she's really become a strong leader for us on defense. To me, the toughest position to play on the field is second base. There's so many responsibilities that you have, um, you know, the bags that you have to cover. um, You just really need to understand strategically how to play the position, not just physically. And I think she really understands how to do that. She's led our infield. uh, And then she's just become a great hitter over the years. I think she's somebody that people don't talk enough about. Um, She, her average is solid. Her power numbers are really good. She's an athlete that's not going to strike out. You know, a 3-2 count, I could easily send the runner because I know she's not going to strike out. She's going to put the ball in play. But uh, I think her uh, the strategy that she takes to the plate every at-bat as well, I've been really impressed with. She knows what she wants to do, what pitches that she's looking for. She stays true to her plan. So just watching her grow from freshman to sophomore, now talking about her and Rachel as juniors, it's been pretty cool to watch. All right, so now I've asked you a little bit about Some of the infield. You're smiling because you know I got to ask, what's the shortstop competition looking like right now? Yeah, you know, that's, uh, and you know, since I've been here, the one thing that you've known about our team is the versatility that we have. And we have versatility. Uh, I could put Allie Bunker at shortstop if that were to work. Um, I have two freshmen um, with Alyssa Brito and Taya Bird that can play short. Um, I have a sophomore, Val. Wong who can play shortstop so I I have a lot of possibilities there and all of them have been working really really hard um I can tell you just a little bit about Alyssa Brito she's got a cannon for an arm she has really really good range she um I feel like she plays that position like an upperclassman um Taya Bird same thing um it's got really like long levers has a really good throw has worked hard there as well I mean it our infield we could give you one look and be extremely solid with that look and then switch it the next game and be extremely solid so i I think you'll whoever ends up in that spot they're all competing right now for it but i think you'll see that um they're going to do a great job over there you know you've talked about a couple players that that have now become familiar faces to fans and it still seems like it wasn't that long ago that they were freshmen i mean i think about tara mcgowan when you mentioned that as well Mm -hmm. i mean tara must just be so excited to to be back out on the field especially with all that she's been through in her career thus far for sure last year it, it was it was awesome watching her her first fall game uh to finally get to play and she hits a bomb in spring, her first spring spring, uh, sp- excuse me, spring game, she comes up and hits a bomb. So Tara, Tara, she's an exceptional athlete. She's got great power at the plate. She is a very, very intelligent hitter. Mm. She knows how to spray the field. Um, and just when she's beat you with a, a ball to the gap or a ball off the wall, she could easily drop a bunt for a base hit. Uh, she's got good speed. 
She's got a strong arm. I really like how she works behind the plate and handling our pitchers. She's um, she's another one. I think there's, I think we've got a lot of athletes on our team that kind of fly under the radar a little bit on the national scene. So. Well, let's hope that that's not the case here coming up after the next few weeks. I can't wait. Uh, Melissa Lombardi, head coach, Oregon softball. It all starts on February 12th, and everybody keep your eyes on GoDucks.com this afternoon for uh, the full release of that schedule so you can start planning. Coach, I, I got to say thanks for always taking the time, and I'm looking forward to a full opening weekend preview with you when we talk next week. Enjoy the rest of the week, and good luck at practice. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Joey. You too. When we get a quick time out, uh, come back, talk a little bit of baseball, both Diamond Sports today on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Dear Wallet, you can't stop in a 2021 Toyota no matter the weather. The Camry all-wheel drive comes out to play. Snowy hills don't stand a chance against the RAV4, and everyone will be comfy in the Highlander. See you in the snow. Toyota. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student-athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Dear Wallet, you can't stop in a 2021 Toyota no matter the weather. The Camry all-wheel drive comes out to play. Snowy hills don't stand a chance against the RAV4, and everyone will be comfy in the Highlander. See you in the snow. Toyota. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. This is the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Listen and imagine. It takes five seconds to send a text, and for those five seconds, you're driving blind. Life is worth more than a text. Stay alive. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Everybody buckle up. Bum, 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 bum. Buckle up. Buckle up. A lot goes on in the car, but you're in control. So only move when you hear the click that says they're buckled in. Never give up until they buckle up. Learn more at safercar.gov slash kids buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Joey Mack, welcoming you back to Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. My thanks again to H.J. Cohn for joining us uh, for Athletic Director Tuesday, brought to you by Pepsi, and to Melissa Lombardi, head coach of Oregon softball. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, today is the signing day eve, which means we can all get ready for that new Oregon football class tomorrow, and we'll see how much fireworks the Ducks are able to unveil, if you will, tomorrow. Uh, 8.30 in the morning, you'll be able to join us on the Oregon football social media channels. We'll have it on the Facebook feed, the Twitter channel, also the GoDucks YouTube, and it'll be a lot of fun. Me sitting here, coaches in the HDC, going through this recruiting class, watching highlights and telling you what they like about this group. That's at 8.30 tomorrow. We'll go for about an hour and a half or so talking with every coach that's currently on the staff about all things recruiting in the Take Flight 21 recruiting class. Going to hear from Brett Walker and maybe Aaron Zavala today a little bit later on as Oregon baseball season is rapidly approaching and we'll zero in on that diamond sport a bit. And if you're also just joining us, Oregon men's basketball trending well toward playing that game on Thursday. More info on tip off Tuesday this afternoon. Watch the show live to, at 2.30 on the Oregon basketball social media channels and of course subscribe to the Oregon Sports Network podcast and tune in on the OSN affiliate in your area at 7 o'clock tonight. Well, we've been doing this feature uh, every Tuesday, and it's been a lot of fun. Thanks to our friends at the Josh Cooley Real Estate team, we've been featuring an Oregon facility. The idea is, you know, Josh Cooley Real Estate team, they're all about the home field advantage. Well, the home field advantage maybe starts for Oregon football with the HDC, the Hatfield Dallin Complex. That, of course, houses the Operations Center, and it was christened the Hatfield Dallin Complex in 2013 in honor of of Loda Hatfield, Phil Knight's mother, and Dorothy Dowlin, 
the mother of Penny Knight. I think that's an awesome homage to something that is very near and dear, I think, to every athlete. You know, this is going to be the the stereotypical way of putting this, but how many times did your mom drive you to practice every day? You know, you got to pay some respect and some love toward those individuals. And that's what they did with the Hatfield Dallin complex. Uh, of course, it, it, it's, it was so groundbreaking. The facility that was designed by ZGF Architects, that's the same firm that just designed the Jaquas Center for student athletes. And as you can see, those of you who are watching and that you have seen, they really do enjoy some glass in their designs. And it still looks amazing to this day. Even though now it is seven, almost eight years old, it features a 145,000 square foot complex including the 170-seat Bob Sanders Theater, state-of-the-art weight room that Aaron Feld and his staff utilize, a cafeteria that not only football but all student athletes utilize, a barber shop, locker room, saunas, player lounges that are just off the charts. The Ducks are uh, obviously very proud of this facility that houses the Oregon football operation. And I think it's important to point out that remember what was in that spot before it was the HDC. I'm giving everybody a chance to think about it because for the most part, it was a parking lot and practice fields. And now those practice fields, there are two of them within the HDC's footprint that are sunken down, but behind the shrubbery, if you will. But the Ducks uh, have taken full advantage of the facility, and it really is still to this day very, very state-of-the-art. Hatfield Dowling Complex. Featuring that today because I thought, you know, it's a big reason why Oregon's able to get the recruits that they are. Winning is important, but the support for the student-athlete experience is, well, to be honest, a really, really big deal. Just uh, across the courtyard from us inside the Casanova Center here, the original offices for every University of Oregon athletic department sport, and now the hatfield Dallin Complex, of course, joining the family about seven years ago. Unveiled uh, in August. And, man, what an August it was, the view from the courtyard. I'll never forget wa walking in to, to get the, the, the tour, you know, the, the, the sort of groundbreaking tour that staff and, and media were able to get jaw-dropping, the HDC. Still is. Absolutely still is. When the game is on the line, you want a proven winning team on your side. The Josh Cooley Real Estate Team thanks you for your support and referrals of friends and family. The official real estate team of the Oregon Ducks, go Ducks. I'll tell you what, New Oregon football Defensive coordinator Tim DeRuder probably talking with the Josh Cooley real estate team right about now as he's getting settled in over at the Hatfield Dallin Complex. Elsewhere, uh, Oregon baseball is preparing for their season coming up. And Brett Walker, I think, is, has a fascinating story to tell. He's a guy that a few years ago I probably wouldn't have said, you know, hey, he's going to be the Friday night starter for the Ducks. This year, really big opportunity in front of him. He could be the Friday night starter. Was very, very good for the Ducks in their shortened season last year. Only played about a month before everything shut down. Brett Walker, though, he's got the ability, I think, to be something special this year. He talked to the media to preview the start of the season and give a little bit of an update on where he's at and the rest of the team's at heading into the season that's supposed to start here in just a few weeks. A bunch of fastball speed and some, a couple other arms uh, mentioned by the coach. What, what's the top speed? I know that's not all the game, it's, but just, just out of curiosity, this um, last year I hit 93 and that was the highest I've, I've pitched. Well, you, you experienced some success last spring, but it was obviously a weird year. Were you, are you able to feel any sense of momentum coming off that year, um, and, and building off the success you did have? Yeah. So obviously confidence, uh, it, it builds confidence from having a good year and uh, a couple good games, but really with all the guys that we have new, it's, it's just makes it more competitive like in practices and during the fall so it's it's all kind of we're worried about this season and the past is the past we're just kind of looking forward but i mean we just we just want to go out there and win games so we just focus on the the first game we have Fred, i know this might be a tough one to answer but um you know being one of the first sports that had their season called off last year because of the pandemic and now having seen what's happened with football programs and basketball programs at Oregon and across the country. Um, are there things that you guys have been able to take advantage of and apply to your situation that's made it easier for you in any way, or how do you guys kind of look at it that way? 
Um, well, you know, I mean, there's just kind of a lot of adjustments. I think that like any program playing sports, I mean, football, I mean, it's a different, different time. It was like two months ago and then basketball is going on right now. I mean, it kind of just evolves of what everyone's been, what our protocols are and you just kind of make the best of it. And I think, uh, I think our coaching, our coaching staff has, has done a good job of, uh, relaying the messages and our trainers have been good at telling us the rules and what we can and can't do. And we just try to be safe and uh, make sure everyone's healthy so we can play. Watts well, makes no secret of the fact that he thinks to be an elite team, you need a, an elite rotation. You know, you need guys that can stack up with anyone in the nation on Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, just as a group, how do you guys feel about where you're at heading into the year and your ability to, to be that kind of group? Um, we, we've, the coaches have acknowledged that, uh, they think we're, we're a special team and we, we take that into consideration and that makes us want to work harder. I mean, I think, I think everyone has confidence of our ability to be good as a group, but we also haven't shown anything. So I think it's just working hard now. And then when the first game comes, we'll, we'll be able to really tell like, okay, we have, we have some, some pieces of a puzzle. We need to put it together now. Great, you didn't get a full first season with Coach Angier. Now you've had uh, the strangest offseason ever to work with Coach Angier. What's it like working with him? What's he like as a coach? What do you like about pitching for him? Um, so Coach Angier, he he has a lot of his uh, philosophies, and I think uh, his philosophies has grown on me and the staff. And just from the start, it's always different getting used to a new pitching coach. And so... I mean, last year was kind of nice because you got used to a pitching coach and now you're, it's like it's year two with basically year one in a, in a sense. So it's nice and just his philosophy is executing pitches and now it's just ingrained in our brains to execute pitches. And I think that will lean forward, that will help us out. And it, we've built, we built, I mean, the whole pitching stuff's built a really good relationship with them and he knows us well now. So it's, it's good to work with them and it's, it makes us better. That's Jake Angier that Brett Walker was talking about there, pitching coach for the Ducks. And fans, I got to tell you, I mean, this is a staff that Coach Wozkowski has put together, I think, that this year they're going to do some impressive things. I really like the depth of this Oregon team heading into this season. I actually talked to Coach Wozkowski for about half an hour, an hour the other night. And I think that this is a squad that you're going to enjoy seeing them play. And they're going to be a little deeper, I think, they've been in years past. Some of that's due to the pandemic. I mean, everybody's going to be a little bit deeper around the diamond this year because you have a lot of guys coming back that that maybe last year would have been there last year, in addition to all those new freshmen coming in. This is going to be a different year in terms of depth. I like Oregon's depth on the mound, though. Brett Walker's big reason why. That guy, I think, can can compete and be a Friday night guy if the Ducks need him to. Coming up next, uh, we'll switch gears, uh, talk a little bit more about basketball and what to expect this week. Man, I hope it's some games. Back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. After two years of construction, my wife and I finally moved into our dream home. So when a bathtub fixture broke, causing major water damage, I was glad we had the home insurance protection we needed. How do you know your home is protected? Talk to a country financial rep like me, Nick Simon. We can help you understand your options and select coverages to meet your needs. Then if something happens to your home, you won't have any surprises. Need the right coverage for your home but not sure where to start? Visit TakeSimpleSteps.com or contact a local country representative. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon Athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. Join in. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. More Duck Insider coming up on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Most of my family, they never graduated high school, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. You took the first step and quit smoking. 
but even former smokers may still be at risk for lung cancer. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know about a new low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early. It takes only 60 seconds and could save your life. You took the first step, now take the next. Visit SaveByTheScan.org for a simple quiz to see if you're eligible and talk to your doctor about screening. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Duck Insider, presented on Point Community Credit Union. Joy Mack here with you inside the Country Financial Studio. Now we got tip-off Tuesday coming up. Uh, Kelly Graves is going to sit down with Terry Johns, offer some updates on the Oregon women's basketball program, and I'm happy to report that men's basketball back at practice. They're getting ready for the Cougars coming up at 8 o'clock on Thursday. That's the plan. We'll have a 7.30 pregame show for you across the Oregon Sports Network. This is a cool program that's coming up uh, over the next few weeks, thanks to our friends at First Interstate Bank and the Ducks. They're doing their Community Heroes program. They've done it over the course of the last few years. You can go to GoDucks.com. Excuse me. Go, slum, what's that? Go to GoDucks.com slash Community Hero Program, and you can nominate somebody who's made a difference in the community. And some of those nominees are going to be winning an autographed basketball from Coach Altman, some Duck prize packs as well. The whole point of this is to recognize somebody that is just doing something awesome in the community. It could be your friend who helped – carpool to work if you had to do that or something you know so thanks to our friends at first interstate bank goducks.com slash community hero program check it out i think that uh we're hoping to bring some positivity to the world with this also some positivity for the second time in his career and the first as an individual oregon red shirt junior charlie hunter has been named the u.s track and field across country coasters association division one men's national athlete of the week by the way you want you, I I couldn't get through godux.com slash, but I got through U.S. track United States Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association. Yeah, Men's Athlete of the Week though for Charlie Hunter. He was part of the Ducks' record-breaking DMR and became the number four all-time performer in the mile in last weekend's Razorback Invitational. So to Charlie Hunter, well done. That just coming out here as we get off the air, closing in on the two o'clock hour. Thanks everybody. Tomorrow's signing day. Looking forward to it. We'll talk to you bright and early, 8.30 in the morning. You can watch live on the Oregon football social media, talking with all the coaches, going through the highlights. We'll see you then. When you went car shopping, you meant business. You ace vehicle history searches and test drives. You out salesmen to the salesman. Now you've got your wheels. If you manage that, you can get your retirement plan on track. Visiting aceyourretirement.org can help. With 401k tips and smart saving strategies, you'll have the info you need to get more for your future. Go to aceyourretirement.org because when it comes to speeding past financial challenges, you're an ace.